today's video segment, we're going to take you through the whole process of installing a paint protection film coating on the front of the car, as well as a ceramic coating on the entire vehicle. Now, the goal of today's video is not to turn you into a professional installer, but to actually demystify some of the processes and the terms involved when you're talking to your detailer should you decide to do this to your very own Tesla. We're on site here with Evelyn Paint Protection Film Coatings in Markham, and that is Fabian. He's the owner, and he's going to take us through the whole process. So let's follow along and watch how it goes. recommend if you can for a booking that somebody would take it right from the dealership or the uh, delivery and, and, and get this done as soon as possible. So Ideally, right. yes. Uh, and that's in an ideal world, yes. In an ideal. Um, I've had a few of them. The client has gone from dealership straight to here within 48 hours. Then I've had them where they've gone straight from the dealership directly here. I've got an imperfection here where there's a dust nail, but now I've got wet sanding, wet sanding marks that have to come out and then the holograms will come out. So I've got to go in there first before I can do anything else. So just for our viewers benefit here, what you're talking about is what your detailers call paint correction, correct? Yeah, exactly. So we're, we do full inspection of the vehicle, make sure that the, the paint is at optimal condition first to see if it's even suitable for some clients, they don't want to go through the whole paint correction process, right? They just want to go straight to, uh, you know what, All right, if it's going to cost me extra to do the paint correction, you know what, it's okay, it sits outside. You know, I just like the coating. If you can just give me anything that's going to make it look as good as possible, but I want to protect it. Right. That's the situations where we jump from the wash process, decontamination, and then we just go straight into the coating. The best process is to go wash, decontamination, whether it's mechanical, chemical, do a clay process, and then you go into a polish. And the polish could be a light polish, which is a one step. It's just you're looking at removing minor imperfections to get it from a you know a paint finish that's not 100%, you want it to get to about 80%. With this area here that has the actual uh, dust nib, um, it's not easy to see straight on, but from an angle you can see it, you'll definitely see that there's gonna be a two step on this panel, particularly because of the fact that we, got, we have to remove the wet sanding marks, once the wet sanding marks are removed with compound, then we have to rebring the gloss factor back up on the paint. So we're gonna have to do a polish. And that polish could also be something that's gonna leave minor abrasive. So then we might have to do even like a, a third step, which is jeweling, which is meaning that we're gonna completely gloss the, the, the finish out 100% if we're not able to achieve that in the second step. Um, other parts of the car, I can see uh, there's, it's white, so looking at it face on, you don't see it, but if you're on an angle, you can see there's light, um, light uh, minor scratches or marring in the finish and stuff like that. That can come out. Like, I mean, with light polish, there's some little things on here, there's a little bit of tar. Overall, good finish. Light polish on certain panels and a two-step polish on other panels, and um, good to go. Be good.
White Lightning came in about four or five days ago. We did a wash and uh, decontamination me mechanical and chemical. That was the first uh, step. From there, the vehicle came in, went through the, the natural drying process, and then we went into a paint correction stage. Uh, so for the paint correction, it's interesting because a lot of people would think that a white vehicle or a light colored vehicle, the scratches and whatnot may not show as well. Unfortunately, once you put a, a coating on any kind of surface, it'll highlight if you don't get them out. Upon inspection of the vehicle, we found that there were a bunch of things in our industry, we call them as RIDs, random isolated deeper scratches. There was a bunch of them all over the place. Um, there wasn't as many swirl marks, but those random isolated deeper scratches take a little bit more time to finesse the paint finish, especially because Tesla has a softer paint finish. So we went through two stages of that. Once the two stages of uh, paint correction was completed, we then started the uh, paint protection film installation. So we installed Prestige Films Clear Guard Nano. Uh, we did our partial plus uh, front end, where we installed the uh, full hood, we installed the uh, partial fenders, uh, which is roughly about 20 inches, uh, sorry, 20, I think about 18 to 20 inches up we did. We did a little bit more. And then we did a full bumper on that as well, along with the mirror faces, the headlights, and the fog lights. Once we completed the paint protection process installation, we then went into the ceramic coating. Fun part is about the ceramic coating is we went with Fine Lab Ceramic Plus. The Ceramic Plus was installed once, and then I did a nice little duty and I surprised uh, Trevor here and we actually did three coatings. So we did three coats on the vehicle. So we went with the Ceramic Plus as the base on top on the, on the paint. And then from there we did two, uh, two coatings of our Ceramic Light top coat, which uh, will give this thing extra durability. It'll give it a super slick hydrophobic surface. And honestly, if you were to touch this right now, I think you'd probably slip off and bump your head. So uh, to be honest with you, this paint right now is so much brighter, so much whiter, and so much sharper than it was when it first came in. All right, so the natural process, it would be as soon as the vehicle has been finished, you wanna at least give it a week to two weeks before you wash the surface, before you run it through any kind of touchless car wash, before you take a wash mitt and actually start agitating the surface. You want the uh, ceramic finish to have a natural opportunity to outgas, you want it to start its drying process. You want to give it a nice head start because naturally ceramic coatings will not completely dry out for about 30 days. But we say after a week to two weeks, you can actually wash the, you can actually wash the vehicle. So two things that we'd want to stay away from after you've had your vehicle ceramic coated. You want to stay away from using harsh soaps. So stay away from anything that has like an alkaline base to it, uh, dish soap, please stay away from it. Uh, you want to stay away from uh, soaps that are not pH balanced. You want to have a good car soap at the end of the day because you want good lubricity, but you also want to have car soaps that don't have waxes in, in them, such as the most popular ones that you go to the big box stores like um, Canadian Tire or uh, whatnot to pick up would be like Meguiar's uh, Gold Class. They have wax in them stay away from that. You need to find yourself a nice pH balance. There's one that I use from uh, 3D products. Uh, it is a pH balance soap and it's just a clean soap. It just cleans the surface, that's it. Doesn't leave any residues behind, doesn't leave any waxes behind because there's no need for it. You have a ceramic coating on the car. It's meant to sheet the water, it's meant to have self-cleaning capabilities, and it's meant to protect the surface. So with Fine Labs, we put the Ceramic Plus uh, ceramic coating on the, on the base, and then after that, we topped it with uh, two layers of the Ceramic Light uh, to give it that extreme hydrophobicity aspect and a nice cleaning, uh, self-cleaning durability. Uh, but the main thing is for warranty is that when it comes to bird poop, you definitely do not want to have that or uh, bug guts sitting on the paint surface for anything more than 24 hours because it's protein. It can eat through it. As well with warranty, you want to ensure that we're applying these coatings on a OEM finish. We don't want it to be applied necessarily to a bad paint finish, such as an aftermarket finish, because we can't guarantee that that paint finish is going to be uh, as strong and stand up to the necessary, you know, rigorous day-to-day -day activities that you're doing with your vehicle, because we can all understand that paint finishes can fail. Not necessarily from the OEM aspect, but aftermarket paint finishes can fail. What you're going to want to do is when you're cleaning the vehicle, is stay away from anything that's harsh, especially even with your wheels. Your wheels can be coated throughout this process as well. Stay away from harsh stuff. Using pH balanced soaps is a must. Using good washing techniques is a must. You don't want to be washing your car in direct sunlight either. Without getting too in-depth, you then need water that is softened. 
so that if it dries, it's not leaving water spots on the surface. So in hindsight, washing the shade either really early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Use a good pH balanced soap. Stay away from high alkalines, stay away from acids, stay away from uh, spring any kind of um, multi-purpose on the, on the finish. And uh, at the end of the day, if you can wash it by hand, wash it by hand. If you have to take it into a car wash, touchless car wash is the best result for when you're taking care of your ceramic coating. So for the warranty now with ClearGuard Nano, it's a 10 year limited warranty. It'll help you out in regards to yellowing, fading, cracking uh, from UV exposure and bubbling due to manufacturing defects. Those are pretty simple, pretty basic. It's pretty much across the majority of the paint protection film manufacturers. The bonus now above and beyond the two warranties that I've been speaking about for Fine Labs and also for uh, ClearGuard Nano, the paint protection film. As a certified installer for Fine Labs and also for Prestige Films and for many other uh, protection film installations, I've created my own warranty so that the consumer, you the client, understands that when I put the film on your car, I'm taking responsibility for it. So if I've done something that is an installer error, it's going to fail. And if it's going to fail, it's going to fail within a short period of time. However, I give my clients a one year warranty for my installations. So if there's something that is not going well with the installation within reason and you know an edge lifts or we find that the film starts to peel. Doesn't mean that the film is failing due to the manufacturer defect. That could have been something from my standpoint that I didn't seal that edge properly or I didn't take the right care necessary to remove dust and debris. The goal of installation is to have a near perfect finish. And the reason being is that the main purpose of the film is to, is to give you optical clarity and it's also to one, deter you from rock chips, scratches, especially if you're wrapping the whole vehicle. But what we want to make sure is that we don't add any other imperfections to the film during the installation process. So if we see a little bit of dirt or dust, it is our goal and it is our process that we have to try to relift the film to get that little bit of dust out. If not, what it'll do is it'll leave like a little dust nib underneath the film, thus creating a little bit of a tenting situation. Whereby, where I think someone on YouTube said, if we don't get those scratches out or those little dust nibs out, what will it do? Well, what we'll do is it'll leave a little tent, meaning that it'll cre create an air pocket. That air pocket can then expand over time and cause the film to lift. So our goal is, is to try and level the paint, ensure that we have a controlled environment, making sure there's no dust, there, is, there isn't any uh, lint or anything like that, damaging the adhesive and creating a lift line can create distortion in the film, creating an unhappy customer because they'll look at it and they'll feel that the installation has a number of different imperfections. When installing ceramic coatings, you want to have a good knowledge going into the interview, I would say, with your installer. Get to know your installer. Know who your installer is. Get an idea of their background. How long have they been in the business? Do they have any reviews? Have they installed on the same type of vehicle that you are bringing into the shop? Find out from your installer what their process is. How do they go about their different steps? Do they keep you up to date during the installation process? Is there communication? How do they communicate? Do they text? Do they email? Do they call? Figure those things out. Know what is comfortable for you. When you speak to your installer, there should be some form of rapport that is established within the first five minutes. Let's be honest. When you go to have a date with someone and you sit down with them, you kind of know whether you like her or you don't by the time you've actually sat down and had the first course, right? Think of that kind of conversation when it comes to finding your installer. The biggest thing after you've chosen your installer is, is that you now want to speak to the different uh, options you have available. You need to know what type of films that you have available. Do you want to use the top tier? Do you want to use a mid-grade? Or, or do you just want a good film because of the fact that I'm leasing the vehicle, I'm going to probably give it back within two to three years. After you've gone through the film question with your, with your installer and you've chosen your materials and whatnot, here's the big question. Price. Prices do vary. On my website, I do have entry-level pricing, giving you the from standpoints uh, for the ceramic coatings and also the from standpoints for the uh, paint protection film installation. For something that what we did today with uh, White Lightning, the ballpark on everything that we did, it's in the $3,000 mark. It's a lot of work. Uh, let's be honest, if we were to calculate how many hours of paint correction that we put into the vehicle, it's about, it was probably about 15 hours with paint correction that was done. So White Lightning's been here, today being the fifth day and to some people that might be a long time but guess what you get what you pay for you want someone that's going to take their time with your vehicle treat it as if it's their vehicle and also at the same time understand your needs 
the worst case for any business, for any individual like myself, is to have someone coming back for something that I've missed, that all I had to do is take a few extra moments to ensure that that was done first, set that expectation with them, and for them to know that if you give me the time to do what it is that I need to do, there shouldn't be a reason that you're coming back. And if there is a reason that you're coming back, at least you know you're comfortable with your installer, with the film that was chosen, and with the time that was taken to get the job done right. Well, there you have it, folks. Everything you need to know, well, within reason, I guess. Exactly. Um, about paint protection and uh, ceramic coating. I want to say a big thanks to my friend here, Fabian, who uh, did the real, really good work on the car. I'm very pleased with it. He actually did some extra things on there, and I'll show you uh, a little bit later. And um, it went over and above. So if you're in the Toronto and the Markham area, uh, please give him a call. He is absolutely the best. I'll put a link down in the video description. You can check out his website and all the products that we use today. So uh, that's it for today. You want to give a little bit of shout out to your, uh, your social media and stuff? You on Twitter and Facebook? Yeah, on Twitter I am uh, Evelyn Pro Films. Uh, on uh, Facebook it's Evelyn Protective Films. On Instagram, Evelyn Protective Films. And my website is www.evelynprotectivefilms.ca. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the segment, and don't forget to follow us. And the handle on Twitter is at Model3Owners. Check out the forum at Model3OwnersClub.com. And if you'd like to see more videos like this on different topics, please consider taking a look at our Patreon page, and you can find that at patreon.com forward slash Model3OwnersClub. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. See you, folks.